أحمد هو وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فقال عز وجل يمحك الله الربا ويربي الصدقات اللهم احدنا وحدي بنا اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد So today I want to talk about the Ponzi scheme a pyramid scheme that is a integral part of paper money in the 1970s they made what is called the forex and they made the foreign exchange you know the exchange of currencies and a lot of you may know that when you go to Saudi Arabia you give them the dollars or you give them some currency and they give you the reals in in its place well in this world the dollar and the other major pairs which i'm going to share with you they're on the top of the pyramid and no one can move that away there's there's no like there's no like fair competition between currencies and countries the dollar is at the top and uh, then other currencies follow and so no matter if you're a muslim country you're always going to be at the bottom for many reasons which i will be discussing but let me start by saying what are the major currency pairs well of course there is the uh, us dollar there's the euro there's the pound there's the the swiss dollar okay there's the yen there's the aussie dollar of australia there's the new zealand dollar called the kiwi dollar and of course there's the us dollar okay these are the major currencies of the world and they have been given that uh label you know just like they give labels like this is a developed country this is a developing countries based upon criteria that they make uh based upon their own understanding so for example um they'll talk about currencies based upon the interest rates okay and they'll talk about the uh the 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 strength of a currency because of how much import and export it has even though from an islamic perspective what is healthy economically is the one that is surplus without debt but if you look at from an islamic perspective it doesn't matter if there's import or import if if the country for example can produce its own stuff it doesn't need to import and it doesn't need to export because it just has enough for its own people uh what happens is in this current system countries and companies are Uh, encouraged to export and not even give to their own people because it helps l- make you look good in front of other uh countries okay so now uh you have a you know just like in the dollar bill you have the pyramid well the dollar bill is literally part of a what we can call a ponzi scheme a pyramid scheme where the people that are on top benefit from the work that is done by the people in the bottom right and there are so many currencies that are pegged to the dollar and pegged to these different countries uh, currencies and these other seven cu- currencies like the yen and the uh the swiss dollar the uh the aussie dollar the australian dollar all these are pegged to the dollar okay and so the dollar benefits uh regardless so if you're in a uh, and and what does this have to do with humanity being enslaved i'm going to talk about this and what does this have to do with muslim countries because the muslim countries as long as they're part of this paper money system this paper money uh spider's web right that uh the awhan al bayt the most weakest of the houses is the uh the, the bayt al ankabut is the house of the spider it is on such flimsy grounds So uh in an Islamic uh, definition of what would be a healthy economy would be that economy that is without debt and has surplus after debt okay but you have over here for example the US dollar that's going to be on the top no matter how much debt there is no matter how bad the economy is it's going to always be on the top because that's the gradation that's been given to it and you know there are a lot of excuses people have for why that is the case Let me just uh, share with you uh the situation of the US debt. Please share this with other people because it is only with this you begin to understand that why Surah Ar-Rum which talks about the spider's web and uh, sorry, 
Sutul and Kabut and Sutul Rum are together. And there's many reasons for this, but one of the reasons is the this reason that I'm explaining right now, which is that this financial web, you call it the World Wide Web, is one dimension of it. The financial dimension is the other. And if you ever look at these financial companies, they always have that logo of the earth with the grid on it, with the web on it, right? Just like with the United Nations and with these other um, logos that they got going on. Now, if you look at the, from an Islamic perspective, none of this is real money. Right, they they're printing money. It has no real value. But if you just look at from an Islamic perspective, also, what is a healthy economy? Okay, well here you have the United Na you have the United States, right, uh, which is producing the GDP is twenty five, I think that's trillion, and the debt is thirty one trillion. Okay, and uh, and then you got China. That is actually doing a little better at 17 trillion versus 14 trillion debt. Uh, but then you have Japan, which is three times as bad, but yet its yen is considered like the top seven currencies of the world. Why? Because it's been pegged that way. It's been put that way. It's been designed that way. And so even though it only makes four trillion, right? What? Then the debt is 13 trillion. Okay. Same thing with Germany, almost hardly making it, UK hardly making it, uh, India hardly making it, France hardly making it, uh, Italy, you got all these countries hardly making it. Um, so what's going to happen, right, with, with this uh, debt, uh, with this situation? Okay, so now let me share with you this. So on the positive side, for example, in the U.S., the revenue per citizen, average revenue per citizen is $13,000 a year, $13,789 a year, okay? And what is the debt per person, per citizen? The debt per, per citizen is $94,000, okay? The debt per taxpayer is $200,000. $46,000. Why? Because this is the debt. Now, from an Islamic perspective, if you're in debt, you're in trouble. Okay? And if you're in debt with interest, you're in double, triple, quadruple trouble. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَمْحَكُوا riba wa وَيُرْبِسْ sadaqat." And Muslim countries, until they don't understand that as long as they run the same debt economy that they're giving to you, in which they have mandatorily placed themselves on the top and you have no chance of being on the top, right? That and, and if you look at the history, what happened? Turkey was doing really good. It was even willing to give debt to other countries. And then boom, Malaysia before that, boom. Anytime a Muslim country starts to do good, something will happen to make it. And, and they will do that because this is how they make you listen to the IMF, listen to the World Monetary uh you know, fund, listen to the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the agendas the United Nations has, and now more recently, the reset, the great reset. Okay. So the point is that, uh, the Islamic definition of what is a healthy economy is very different from what they have here. Number one. Number two, paper money isn't real money. Number three, in this fake paper money economy, they have pegged the dollar at the top, no matter how much debt it has, okay? And they'll talk about, and I don't want to go into the details, oh, but the United States is willing to take on the debt of the world, and that's like a big burden on the United States. I'm not going into that. The point is, debt is bad, okay? And every almost every other criteria they have to see what is a healthy economy, almost every single one of them is bad. For example, consumerism, how much consumption there is. That's not necessarily a very good thing. Uh, import, import, export. That's not necessarily true. You know, the Quraysh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about them. لِإِلَافِ كُرَيْشِ إِلَافِ مِرَحْنَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالسَّيْفِ فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَتْعَامَهُمْ مِنْ جُوءٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفِ That Allah gave them the ability to do business in, in the north, in the south, in the winter, in the summer, right? In Syria and, 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 and Yemen. And they did this business and they were self-sufficient, right? You don't have to import, export necessarily. If you're self-sufficient, and your debt free is much better than from an Islamic perspective that if you got a lot of export and export export going on, but your country is in a debt of like a, 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 almost $200,000 per person. 
that's not a good economy. And so you have a problem of that this is not real money. You have a problem of that it's interest-based. You have a problem of the criteria doesn't fit Islamically. Then you got Muslim countries buying into this system of paper money and central banks in which they're putting you on the bottom. Like you accept that you're on the bottom and you can never be on the top. No matter how good you're doing, you, there'll be other currencies that are pegged to the top. Okay, and that's just the reality of this. So if there's a khilafa in the future, the khilafa cannot really be a real khilafa, right? A khilafa cannot be a true Islamic entity unless they have their own uh, monetary system, okay, which will not be based upon this 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 type of banking. There will be a treasury department of the government, but not an independent. Uh, uh, banking system that controls the economy. No, that will not be allowed. And certainly not allowed on interest. And certainly not allowed upon the idea that it's, um, it, that, that it's good to have an economy based upon debt. This is un-Islamically unacceptable. And so, uh, okay. So now let's go on to the next point over here that I want to make. The US dollar is a Ponzi scheme. Now what is a Ponzi? Ponzi scheme is a form of fraud which lures investors and pays profits to earlier investors by using funds obtained by the more recent in, of, of investors. So they make this system and they put the dollar on top, so the dollar's on top, and so everyone that's benefiting is benefiting the dollar also. So for example, if you can't, and you know, it's so interesting because, you know, if you have a country's a currency, let's say you're currency currency is rupees okay or guinea okay whatever it is your currency you can trade within your country in your own currency but you can't trade outside with your currency what type of fairness is that how is that fair so the uh the outside you have to pay commodities like oil for example in dollars okay so the dollar benefits because you have to use the dollar okay to trade and so why? Just imagine when the, all the oil fields came to Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia was able to say and assert itself and say, no, the world has to buy and, and pay. If they can buy and pay in their own currency and, and, and they pay, or, or if it even said, for example, pay in rails, where Saudi Arabia would have been today. But they were silly and they made contracts, uh, in 1973 that were just completely, uh, made no sense. And, uh, probably didn't have much understanding is the least I can say. So it's a form of fraud where you put something on top and that thing that's on top is benefiting from because oil is energy in any country that's using energy and paying for that energy in dollars, the U.S. is benefiting from that. Okay. And so, uh, okay. So what I want to uh, show you is this. Look, real money, gold, and by the way, I have a link in my comment section and I also have a link in my description to my affiliate link with uh, Sunna Currency in which there is the uh, beautiful, beautiful currencies uh, in, in gold and in silver uh, with the Islamic uh, designs. It is, uh, you can say, more expensive of equivalent of other golds. But this, you know, the, the money is just the feel of the word khilafa and one ummah and the Islamic design is so beautiful, right? So I uh, urge you to check it out and to get some of those and uh, and feel, and just when you get it in your hands and put it in your hands, it'll really make you understand what real money feels like. The real gold, the weight at that, that the Sahaba agreed to for a gold coin in the time of Omar radiallahu anh, and when you touch that, it'll make you feel like th there's something spiritual about it. Major currencies against the gold, right? What's what's happening now? Look, all the currencies went down. All currencies have lost 97 to 99% versus gold over 100 years. So the real money is gold, and the real money will always be gold. Because the Quran describes the best of dunya, and the best of dunya described in Quran is gold and silver, okay? And there are other commodities too, but this paper money, this is completely just making something out of thin air. Okay, so now let me share with you how the average human being has become uh, enslaved in this system. Okay, 
Now, in 1913, it took one dollar to buy 30 chocolate bars of Hershey. Now, if you want to buy 30, you have to pay $26. Okay. It took one dollar to buy 10 rolls of toilet paper in 1929. One dollar. And now it would take about $15. In 1944, one dollar you can buy with one dollar 20 bottles of Coca-Cola. Now it would be $14. In 1953, one dollar you can get 10 bags of pretzels. Now it would take nine dollars or almost ten dollars. In 1964, $1 for a movie, now almost $8. In 1971, 17 oranges with $1. Can you believe that? 17 oranges. I mean, that's like a lot of oranges for like $1. Versus what? $6.39. Now, when you look at the prices as they go up, you know, two boxes of crayons for almost $2.28. For, uh, in, in 1997, uh, four grapefruits for $1.61. And now you get a $1 coffee, which is basically mostly water. You get $1 coffee for what? Uh, from McDonald's for $1. Now, you know, this Ponzi scheme. Now, let me share with you this uh, picture here. You'll find this interesting. Right? Who's benefited from this Ponzi scheme then? Okay? Uh, it's the people on top. And uh, a good example of that is when uh, they had the uh, financial collapse in 2007 with the housing crisis. Those of you that have been watching news that are older will remember how the, uh, the whole airline industry was paid by the government. The cars were paid by the government. So here's a picture. It's very interesting. Corporate Welfare Office, right, with the U.S. Treasury. And what does the person say? The person says, yeah, yeah, this is just temporary. Free market works best when there's no government intervention. Get in line, buddy. So get in line to get the dollars from where? From the U.S. government. They get most of the dollars. All these corporations, right? They get, they get, who paid Pfizer in this, uh, this whole uh, circus that happened, okay? And uh, then let me share with you this, okay? Uh So with $20, it used to be in 1989. This is how much groceries you would get with $20. Then 2005, then 2014, and now $20 can't do nothing for no one. Okay? It's like, here's another picture, bailout. The government gives bailout, gives money, right, to these corporations, large corporations, large businesses that are failing like the auto um, automobile industry like the uh aircraft industry like the banks and then you got a it's interesting that you know they always put the banks with this piggy this pink pig uh uh picture always so bailout money by uncle sam being thrown to the banks because they did bad business with interest when it came to the uh, housing uh industry okay and so uh, this is the reality of the situation that it, it takes away the buying power of the individual. He can't buy any groceries now with $20, for example. It takes uh, away uh, f the real free market. Okay, If you want to talk about real free market, free market in Islam is every country is fair. Every country is equal when it comes to finances. Every country is equal when it comes to finances. Okay. Because when you hurt other people based upon fi finances, like sanctions they do on countries, you're hurt hurting the average person. You're not hurting the elite. Here's another picture that kind of points to what I'm trying to say here. So you have this ship that's sinking. The U.S. dollar value purchasing power sinking, right? Inflation, okay? You, have, you can't buy anything because there's too much inflation, too much debt upon debt. They print money and call it a debt. And uh, they call it money, call it debt, and they pay their own bills with the money that they printed. And the rest of the humanity is stuck actually trying to make uh, this paper money work as if it's real money when it's not real money. Okay? And so, and, and the only real money that there is is gold and silver. 
And so these people are now in the boat uh, when the dollar collapses because of inflation, which is because of r inflation happens because of riba, right? Yamhakullahu riba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, uh, will destroy riba in that riba-based system. Okay. We could have saved a lot of people, he says, but at least we have our assets because they use that paper money to buy assets like land and gold and silver and commodities and wheat and all. You know, the average person can't do that. So we have our assets. We can buy people's time from other countries with all the money we made off with. Oh, I mean generated. Okay. And so this is the situation in the world uh, today when it comes to this. Um, so here it is. Real money is on top, which is the gold, which is the commodities, the crops, the land, all that. The central banks, they give it to those governments under them. They give it to Wall, Wall, Wall Street. They give it to international corporations. Then the smaller tier banks get the money. Smaller businesses get the money. And then the average Joe Schmo gets whatever is the bread crumbs of this paper currency money that is uh, really uh, not even money. Okay. And so this is the situation. Muslim countries are would, would be well advised to understand. And Muslim economists, I wish they would wake up. They're so much bought into this system that it, it they need to, if they read the Quran and understand. This is why, you know, the most secular people, the most, you can say, secular and even atheistic attitude people are usually the economists. You talk to most Muslim economists, they're like confused people. Confused. Because they just don't know the basics. Something as basic as debt free is good. Uh, something as basic as interest is bad. You know, th they have, uh, and, and the thing is that they've taken the finance, finances, monetary system and divided it into so much different aspects that you have no idea. One, it's like they look at the leaf and they don't know the whole system. But one thing is very clear. Debt free is good. Self-sufficiency is good. And these are not the criteria by which they're looking at other countries. And then they're telling those other countries that, that may be self-sufficient, that uh, those other countries that don't have that much debt, oh, but you got to do what us, us, we, what we, the dollar people do, or what the pound people do, uh, because our currency is on the top. And they invent reasons for why their currency is on top. So I wanted to, uh, just share with you this Ponzi scheme, this pyramid scheme that's going on in the world with the U.S. dollar. The other point I want to make, which is something the Prophet told us, وسلم, this whole scheme, this pyramid scheme, just as happens with any... I mean, if you want to understand this, just have you ever seen a pyramid scheme fall? Have you ever seen a Ponzi scheme fall? Right? There comes a point where the debt is so high that Everything you're doing becomes meaningless. And so the system is going to fall. The system is going to fall because the same reason every Ponzi scheme fails. Okay, Ponzi schemes don't work. And so this is going to fall. And when it falls, it's going to fall hard. And most people are not going to be prepared for that fall. But it's going to happen. And the Prophet told us, وسلم, it will happen. The Prophet said, وسلم, there will come a time nothing will have value except gold and silver. The Prophet told us وسلم, that the global cities of the world will fall. The Prophet told us وسلم, that Medina will be the last city to fall. The Quran tells us, in there will be no city except we will get it, it will be destroyed. Why? Because your banana comes from 5,000 miles away. Your oil comes from 5,000 miles away. And when the financial system, and then, you know, the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His wisdom, perhaps, one of the reasons Allah mentions war with interest is that when your debt is too much, your only way to get out is to create war. And to create war, you need money. So you create more debt. Then you then need the resources, actual resources like commodities, like they would steal from Africa and Asia, uh, India, so on and so forth. Then they need real commodities or oil for that matter. Uh, then they need real commodities that they need to sell or take in order to have some 
value sustained in that economy. So uh, riba leads to wars. And uh, we have a big riba system in the entire world. And we have seen more wars in the last 70, 80 years than the entire pop, than the entire history of military wars prior to that. Okay. And so we got a Ponzi scheme and Muslim countries need to realize that they need to come out of this Ponzi scheme. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.